The thalamus is the gateway for all discriminative information that makes it to cerebral cortex. So it's the gateway to, to perception. And the key organi organizing principle of thalamus is its division into a number of different nuclei. And if the thalamus does anything well, it does this. It keeps information segregated. That is, if information entering the thalamus is of a different sort, a different modality, or let's say hearing, audition versus vision, those two uh, sensory elements are going to be kept entirely separate. They're not going to converge. Uh, moreover, if within a particular modality, such as vision, there are different sorts of information, those two are going to be kept separate. We're going to see that very clearly. And one of the classic segregation of function ideas is right here. So this is the somatic sensory thalamus right here. And you'll notice there are two nuclei, one of which is VPL, the ventral posterior lateral, and the other is VPM. They're both somatic sensory, yet this VPL is for the body and VPM is for the face. Now, the nomenclature is fairly straightforward for most nuclei. The first letter, such as ventral for VPL and VPM, well, let's take these guys, lateral for LP, or medial for medial dorsal, or the anterior nuclei. So those terms, the very first name, tells you what group of thalamic nuclei you're dealing with. The thalamus is then divided really into five groups, an anterior group, a ventral group, a medial group, and a lateral group. And then this group right here, uh, a bunch of cells that are found inside a fiber tract, and they're called intralaminar for that reason. So five groups of thalamic nuclei. And then the second name, such as posterior and VPL, or lateral and VL, tells you what part of that group you can find them. So posterior and the ventral group, and then lateral and medial nuclei tell you that ventral, ventral group, posterior, where in the ventral group you can find them, and then which specific nucleus in the ventral posterior region. Is it a lateral nucleus or a medial nucleus? Now there are some exceptions. One of them is right here the largest nucleus in the thalamus. It's called the pulvinar. The pulvinar is part of the lateral group. And then the two big exceptions that we'll run into repeatedly, at least big in terms of their significance rather than their size, are the medial and lateral geniculate nuclei. It says body here, I always hated that. So nuclei. Uh, what are they up to? Well, geniculate, whenever you see the word gen, or genu in the brain. It means it's bent. Genu means knee. And so a nucleus or a part of the brain that has a bend to it has genu in it. Genuflect is to, is to curtsy, to, to, to bow, to curtsy, right? So genuflect, to bow at the knee, to bend at the knee. And so sure enough, that's what you've got. Uh, genu, uh, the lateral and medial geniculate nuclei have a certain bend to them. These uh, are both part of the ventral group. So lateral and medial, in this case, isn't telling you what group they're part of. It's telling you which geniculate they are. One is closer to the midline than the other. The medial geniculate is closer to the midline than the lateral, and so it has that name. So these, these two terms, medial and lateral for the geniculates, don't tell you which group they're in. Both are in the ventral group. The medial geniculate nucleus is the auditory relay nucleus. It gets an input from the inferior colliculus. And the inferior colliculus is an obligatory synapse for all auditory brainstem inputs. So inferior colliculus sent inferior. Colliculus sends axons to the medial geniculate. That makes the medial geniculate nucleus the auditory relay nucleus for the thalamus. It sends axons, as you will see right here, to auditory cortex. So what we have then is uh, a coming together of auditory information in the medial geniculate, uh, then the packaging of that information, and it's sending off to areas of cortex 
that because it gets an input from medial geniculate, those areas of cortex are auditory and functional.